My name is Charlie Alex, and I'm a veterinary pathologist and a second year PhD student in integrative pathobiology at UC Davis. Our lab works on discovery and pathogenesis of persistent viruses. These are viruses that infect for a long time, presumably for life, but may not cause any obvious disease or maybe only cause problems when we become immune suppressed. So trying to pinpoint the effects of these viruses is really important, but also very tricky. My project fo focuses on a virus we discovered in red pandas. These are an endangered species with only about 10,000 animals left in the wild and about 250 in zoos in the US. We discovered a new virus called red panda amdo parvovirus in a panda from a local zoo that was brought to us for postmortem exam. This virus, which is labeled here with red, was clearly associated with inflammation throughout the body. But when we started looking at other red pandas in the collection, we found that they were all testing positive without any apparent disease. So these are clinically healthy animals that were clearly carrying the virus. So this virus is causing dramatically different outcomes in infected animals. And we hypothesize that these are persistent infections. So to understand their impact on this endangered species, our goals in this study were to investigate the prevalence, persistence, and phylogenetics of this virus in zoo red pandas. We've tested now 101 red pandas and found a really high prevalence. Over half of them are infected. And one subspecies, the Western red panda, is particularly affected at over 60%. When we look at samples over time, we find that they're continuously shedding. We have samples now spanning almost four years, and the virus is consistently detectable in feces over that time. So this is a really widespread virus, and these animals are persistently infected and continuously shedding. All these cases cluster together phylogenetically. They're part of a single viral species, but with a lot of variation, almost 10% sequence divergence across a genome that's only 5,000 nucleotides long. We found three distinct lineages and evidence of recombination, which tells us that there are opportunities for co-infections that lead to these recombinant genomes. Red pandas are often transferred among zoos for breeding, and that's presumably how this enzootic transmission is occurring. We don't yet know where these infections came from, whether this is a native virus of red pandas or if it's something that spilled over from a different host that they encountered in zoos. We started to test wild red pandas to see if similar viruses can be found there. And we don't fully understand the consequences of these infections. We've seen a spectrum of manifestations, and we're starting to look retrospectively at pathology samples to see if this has been an important cause of disease historically in zoo red pandas. So we have a lot left to learn, but with over half of our zoo population infected and an association with disease, at least in some cases, it's really important that we learn more to try to understand the implications for health and management of this endangered species. So I'd like to thank uh, my mentor, Dr. Pesavento, uh, all of our collaborators in contributing zoos and the ARCS Foundation for your support. Thank you very much.